Hello, beloved saints and sons and daughters of the Almighty. So I just wanted to, this is part two of Tesria and Metzora. And so um, there is um, something I wanted to clarify here. Now, they're only unclean. A woman is only unclean seven days for having a male in uh, 14 days. Um, uh, she's unclean uh, for having a female. However, uh, she cannot touch anything holy <coughs> or go near the tabernacle uh, for the 33 day days for a male and 66 for a female. Well, if she's clean, why can't she go to the temple, right? Because somebody who's unclean can't come near the temple because that would defile the temple. So they have to do their bathing and um, wash their clothes and be clean at evening. And then they could go, <clears throat> depending on, you know, which, um, how they got unclean. But, so they're clean, they're actually clean. Um, they're not unclean, but this, this issue of blood, um, the reason I believe that they can't go near the temple is because blood doesn't make someone unclean, but it is symbolic of death. And Yah can't not be around death or things that are close to death, right? So if a woman has uh, an unusual monthly nida, which is longer than seven days, she's unclean. Um, you know, and so really it points to, you know, all the things that lead to death are unclean. A dead bug, if you touch a dead bug with your hand that's death um, a man has a nightly emission that is a seed that's dying uh, a woman has her monthly uh, nita she's unclean for the seven days uh, that's a death so you know bleeding um you know for 33 or 66 days is symbolic of death in a way even though it's not we know that they're healing and they're going to be fine and so I, I believe this is why she can't like um, only the uh, the the Levites, uh, Levitical women uh, would be able to touch holy things of the uh, temple. And so th that particular law is just for the Levites. But many of the Israelites could go near the temple, but not on their um, not if they just gave birth. They'd have to wait 33 or 66 days. And so this is why they're not unclean, but they can't go near. This is what I believe why they can't go near is because, you know, this excessive bleeding is, is not what Yahweh wants to be around. He doesn't want to be around anything that it's close to death or death or is symbolic of death. And so uh, bleeding a lot is symbolic of death. And so that's what I believe. That, uh, that's why it's... a. Uh, a little bit of a mystery. Okay, let's talk about um, this Metzora. Metzora is interesting because uh, it means disease uh, or being diseased, and it uh, points to leprosy. And so, this leprosy disease, um, there's not. It's not here today. The leprosy that we have, Hansen's disease, is different. It's not the same as this leprosy that's spoken of. Um, leprosy today is, is very close to viligo. Viligo is a, um, a skin disorder where the pigment turns white and it can get raised and inflamed and red and, um, uh, can even scab up. And, um, it also makes the hair white. So it's similar to viligo, but it's not viligo. I just want to make that clear. Uh, Viligo is not contagious where ancient leprosy is contagious. So two completely diseases, two different diseases, but similar in a way. Um, so Viligo is not contagious. Let me just say that. And it's not the same leprosy, but it's similar. That's what I'm just trying to point out. And so um, um, Viligo can be cured. There's actually a great book called Plant Paradox that talks about that. Uh, and also from much prayer, I think, uh, can heal that. But anyway, let's talk about um, this uh, 
so so this leprosy um, was contagious, and so um, and this word metzara is similar to the word matzira, same letters, different meaning, and the word matzira means to bring forth evil. To bring forth evil is matzira. It's very similar to matzora. And so many Jew, it's Jewish tradition that leprosy comes from evil speech, which is lashon hara. This is speaking evil of others, even though it's true. So this is a modern day uh, interpretation of that would be gossip. Gossip is speaking evil of others. And if you're not saying something positive about somebody when they're not around or if they're around, this is gossip. We're not even allowed to listen to gossip. That is a sin to listen to gossip. It's a sin to talk about a bad about others um, because you're really speaking death or people are speaking death, not you. Um, you know, so we don't want to do that. Now, slander is even worse. Nobody who slanders will enter the kingdom of heaven. And that's lying about a person um, and saying an untruth. And that person might not get into the eternal kingdom because of slander. So we have to be careful of that, um, especially. And that's even worse uh, to lie about somebody. So Miriam got leprosy when she started talking bad about Moses she received leprosy on her, herself. So here she is speaking bad about a holy man, the humblest man on the face of the earth, who set upon and anointed as the leader. And here she is talking bad about him. She got leprosy. So here it is, this evil speech. And um, Naaman also got leprosy. And uh, he seemed uh, to be... Uh, very prideful and he got leprosy and because he didn't even want to bathe in the Jordan River which is pride right I mean he's too good for that and then so there seems to be a correlation with pride and gossip and and, and what is gossip it is is basically putting down other people to make yourself superior which is a form of pride right well, what is, what is humility? Is edifying others better than yourself? So, so this, the, it goes, when we say compliments about other people, well, that's humility. When we're insulting people, we're, we're saying we're better than them or they're less than us. And so, so there's a correlation with pride and we don't want to be uh, prideful in any way. Also, we see this, um, with King Uzziah, um, he wanted to go into the temple and um, do sacrifices and or, you know, get, go into the, you know, only the priests are allowed to do that. So he was prideful, right? And so um, speaking bad of others is prideful. And, um, you know, it's funny because people will call other people prideful when they're judging, it's, it's almost, there's this thing called projection, right? So when people project about others or talk badly about others, they're really talking about themselves. And it's, and it's interesting the people that say that other people are prideful, they're really prideful because they're trying to make themselves better than them or make themselves, you know, by lowering other people. So that's pride. And so really this whole disease of leprosy is pride and evil speech. And this is what the Jewish people believe. And also scripture kind of backs this up. And so how do we counter this? And how do we avoid getting leprosy? Now we have to remember uh, that Yahweh punished Israel right away in the desert. He was trying to purify them and make them holy. So whenever they sinned, there was a plague right away or the earth would open up and swallow them up. And so Yah was saying, listen, you're going to do what I say right away. Or otherwise, you're, you know, punishment's going to happen. 
And so many people died. Many people were corrected. Many people were punished with leprosy. He, he was trying to make them holy. So he was like very strict on them. Uh, he gives us mercy and grace today. And we need to be thankful of that because um, we don't get leprosy right away when we say something bad about someone. We've all made that mistake, right? We've all, um, you know, listened to somebody talking bad about somebody. Well, well, this is the message that I'm getting today is we're not doing that anymore. We're not listening to any, anybody who starts talking bad about them, We need to cut them off. Say, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm not allowed to hear that. I'm not allowed to hear that. And so what you're saying is that the commandments supersede whatever you're going to say. So you need to cut them off and walk away um, or, you know, change the subject. And also we need to go throughout the day. I, I, um, me and my son did a, did a um, test <laughs> to see how many times we said something negative Not even about people, about anything, about a business, about anything. And I was surprised. I wrote down how many times I would say something negative. So I am very cautious and aware now. I only try to speak life and positive things. And it's really been a dramatic um, benefit. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, and so it's also a command. It's not optional. Okay. We are commanded in Leviticus 19 to not deal dishonorably with our countrymen. Okay. So we are not allowed to do that. We, uh, that is, uh, we cannot, and, and, and it says in first uh, Corinthians 13, five, love does not dishonor. So this is a command that we cannot dishonor. Talking bad about somebody, even if it's true, it's not allowed. Okay? Let me repeat. Talking bad about someone, even if it's true, is not allowed. That's dishonoring and gossiping. Okay? So, gossip is not allowed. Gossip is not allowed. And that is gossip. And so, it doesn't matter if it's true. The only time that... uh, there's there's this a gentleman named uh, Heim Offitzheim Offitzheim. He wrote a book called Lashon Hara, and he's he he's a Jewish um, scholar, and he basically says that there is no incidents ever that we should speak negative about anybody, no matter what, unless someone's life is in danger. That's it. Somebody's life is in danger. That's the only time that you address it and you address it with as least as many people as possible. Because what you're doing is you're speaking death. Okay? Because when you dishonor somebody, you are bring, making yourself better and bringing them down. And that's, 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 that's death. You're trying to destroy someone's reputation. And it says if you hate your brother... Um, then you've committed murder in your heart. And it's a way of hating your brother. I mean, nobody wants to be spoken bad about and nobody should speak bad about others. So it's, um, it's, it's a murder of someone's reputation and it should, it's, it's illegal according to the Bible. It's not allowed and we, we can't do it. Okay. I recommend everyone read that book. But let's talk about something a little bit. Okay, let's talk about um, a little bit about the leprosy a little bit more. Um, the leper is not pronounced clean unless his skin has no raw flesh or yellow hair or red boils, and it has to be turned black, back white, and is not spreading. Then he can be pronounced clean. Otherwise, he is outside the camp. He must dwell alone until the disease gets better. And when he leaves, he has to shave his head also, tear his clothes, and cover his mouth and say, unclean, unclean. So this was seemed contagious. And so uh, he that's why he had to cover his mouth, kind of like we're wearing masks during the COVID. And so this was public humiliation. 
And Yon's an almighty of justice, okay? He doesn't do this today, but um, how this person embarrassed other people by talking bad about him um, happened to him. So now he's outside the camp. He is shunned because of his evil speech and his pride. And he's embarrassed. He has to embarrass himself publicly by shaving his head, having all these sores on his face and whatever else. And he has to cover his mouth and say, unclean, unclean, so everyone knows he's unclean. And he has to rip his clothes. So he looks like, you know, he has to go through the same public humiliation that he caused that other person. And Yah is an almighty of justice. And whatever we do in this life, will happen back to us. It always it, This always happens in Scripture. Whatever someone does happens back to them. It's not always right away like it happened here, but it happens like many, maybe sometimes years later. So always be good. Always speak life. Always speak love. And never talk bad about anybody. And you'll never be publicly humiliated with a sickness of, of any kind. And so you don't want to go through that. So I, I don't think it's a coincidence that he says that they'll shut him up. The term is, is translated shut him up, which means he's isolated. He's outside and he has to be outside the camp. And really, I don't think it's a coincidence that he says shut up. He'll shut up. The term shut up is used and it's not... <laughs> It's not a coincidence. That means he's talking bad. I believe it's he's talking evil speech out of his mouth. He's gossiping. And so it's almost uh, humorous. Yah has a sense of humor. He is very, uh, he's very wise. He, incre- he created all the different languages when he split them. And so he, he knows what he's doing more than we even be- understand. And so he doesn't want us talking bad. In fact, we're supposed to talk good. And that's my next point that I wanted to get to. But I wanted to uh, point out one more thing. Now, this uh, leprosy could actually go on to their clothes. It could go on their clothes. It could also go on their house. What is Yahweh saying here? Yahweh, it's an outward, this is, this leprosy is an outward sign of an inward evilness. It's an inward evilness and pride is the sneakiest of all sins. It's, it's saying that you're better than somebody else. It's saying that somebody is worse than you. And we're not to do that. We're supposed to edify, according to the Bible, we're supposed to edify others greater than ourselves. This is a command. It's not optional. So, uh, when you see a homeless man on the side of the road, you edify him better than yourself. You call him in, in, with honor. You speak to him with honor as if he was a, a, a judge or if he was a man of, of the cloth, a, a, a preacher, a pastor or something like this. You give him the honor that um, that they deserve because, um, you know, or that he was, you know, uh, uh, an angel you don't know if he's an angel from Yahweh. It says you might be entertaining angels unaware. Yahweh sends angels to test us to see how we're going to treat. Do you think he's going to send somebody in a suit? No. He's not going to send somebody in an angel in a suit. He's going to send an angel wearing a dirty, smelly clothes. And he's going to see how you treat that person. Okay? Think about it. Yah's going to test you. And so if you give honor to that person, guess what? You pass the test. Okay, anyway. Um, so it's an outward sign of an inward illness, which is evil. Okay? And, and it's also showing that sin is contagious. It's so contagious that it can go on your clothes. It can go into the house. Right? It can go into other people. When somebody speaks evil of somebody, guess what? That person's going to hear it and he's going to get mad and say evil about that person. And so here we have Yahweh showing us that leprosy is contagious just as sin and gossip is very contagious and evil is contagious. 
evil is very contagious, you guys. And so we can't, we can't be evil. We cannot be evil. We cannot speak evil about others. It's super important that we learn the symbolic message here that sin is contagious. Evil is contagious. And so why would someone's house get leprosy? And if it, if it didn't get cured of the leprosy, they would burn down the house. Why would they burn down the house? Well, it's also symbolic of a man of the house. If he is speaking evil of others, then the children are all seeing, oh, it's okay to speak bad about other people because uh, daddy's doing it. Well, that house is going to be destroyed symbolically and spiritually. That house will become an evil house and it should be burnt. So um, we don't want to ever speak evil about anybody. We cannot gossip. And it's, this is one of the biggest sins inside the church today. It is the biggest sin in the church today. And so this is something that needs to be addressed. And so how do we counter that? Well, um, love. <laughs> love is the most powerful force in the universe. Okay, so, I mean, it says right here, complimenting can affect a whole lifetime. Be bold and speak life-giving words. Okay, so did you know that Beethoven, uh, his teacher... Uh, inspired him and, and 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 motivated him and complimented him and and encouraged him to take piano lessons and keep doing piano lessons and he became one of the best piano players ever okay because one man complimented another person okay so saying compliments Edifying others is a is a command in the Bible. It is huge. A huge love can stop arguments. It can stop conflicts. It can stop fights. It can start. It can stop disagreements. It can stop lawsuits. It can stop feuds, family feuds. It can stop wars, wars between nations. Love is the most powerful, amazing force in the world. It can, light. And love will overpower darkness. Just like walking into a dark room and turning on the light, there's no more darkness. It's just so overpowering and overwhelming that it, it, evil can't stand. It can't stand. And so um, we also need to remember this, that we're not to be offended. Love does not get offended. So we are not allowed to be offended, even though we're going to be offended, <laughs> right? But... We're not allowed to be offended. So as we grow in the spirit, we learn not to be offended by what people say. And many people learn this over time. That no matter who you are, people are going to say bad things about you. Okay, they called the Messiah a drunkard and a glutton. The Messiah, a drunkard and a glutton. And they called him a blasphemer. They asked him, uh, you know, are, are you the son of... Of the Almighty. He said, yes, I am. And so they called him a blasphemer. And so if they're going to talk, and they called John the Baptist demon possessed. Okay, so if they're going to say bad things about the most holiest people in all of scripture, they're going to say bad things about you. Okay, people are just going to do it. And we can't be offended. So we have to be strong and not be offended. All right. So um, Yahweh is showing us something here. That that we need to do the opposite. We need to do the opposite of speaking gossip and listening to gossip. And that means when someone's not around, let's speak good of them. Let's try to compliment one person a day minimum. One person a day compliment. So I've been trying to implement this. Since I got rid of the negative, I, I try not to speak negative. Um, I don't do it as much since I have been addressing this issue. I don't listen to gossip. I, I cut people off when people want to start talking about others. I'm sorry, I can't hear that. That's exactly what I say right away. And they listen. They, they, they respect that. And so just say, I'm sorry, I can't hear that. And uh, when you know someone's going to speak gossip. And then this is how you succeed. And then also, I've been trying to compliment um, people every day. And yesterday I complimented three or four people, and it's really been uh, powerful. 
It's really growing me in the Holy Spirit. I feel like that, that it's growing something inside of me. And so this is really, really powerful. And this is the main message I want to get across today is let's build people up. Let's edify people as we're commanded to. It's not optional. Let's try to compliment one person every day. Everybody needs a compliment, man. People are having, people are broken. They're beaten down. They need to be complimented. They need to be brought up. That's our job as a light and holy, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Our job is to build people up and get them to see that, you know, being a believer, being a Christian, there is benefits. There is there is good moral rules that we need to follow here that help us grow in the spirit. Because guess what? No flesh will enter the kingdom of heaven. We're all in the flesh, my friends. So we need to fill ourselves with the Holy Spirit. And we do this by following the commandments. And we edify others. We're filling ourselves. When we're doing any loving act... Um, uh, like complimenting others, that fills us with the Holy Spirit, makes us more spiritual and more like Yahweh, and then more likely to be accepted in Yahweh's kingdom. Um, so, you know, it's it's really powerful, and so I I, I think everyone uh, should compliment someone every day. Cut someone off if you hear them gossiping, and make a mark. Take note whenever you say something negative. And write it down and keep a log for two weeks. And every time you do that, say two compliments to counter that insult because you want to speak life and love. And there was a test. Um, they took two plants. One plant they spoke evil and curses to. And the other plant they spoke love and the blessings and they prayed over it. And that plant thrived. The other plant died. Okay, just think how that works on people spiritually. So it's important that we try to compliment everybody all the time. This is powerful. This can help motivate people to become um, something that, you know, we're walking their full potential. You could say one compliment to somebody that would give them the motivation to walk in their full potential in their life. Um, I'll give you an example. There was a, 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 a one man who said, you know, uh, I think you you have a, a talent. I think that you should work on that, that gift that you have. I think you have a, a talent there. And the person didn't think he had a talent, but this guy believed in him. And then he wound up working in that and really... Um, doing well so it was it was it was amazing just from one person's compliment this guy wound up doing amazing things and so you don't know what your one compliment can do your one edification your one kind word to build someone up to be and also you're showing that christians are at a higher standard than the world right because we don't involved with worldly stuff that worldly people gossip worldly people listen to gossip we don't do that right we're better than that we're we're trying to bring it to the next level okay so let's just go out there and compliment people and and, bring, and build them up okay the other thing i noticed in chapter 14 is when a leper comes the same <coughs> items that are used for somebody who's defiled by a dead body, which is death, defiled by death, uh, are used for people who have leprosy. So they would use hyssop, cedarwood, scarlet. Um, and so it's interesting because Yeshua was given vinegar to drink with hyssop and scarlet robe. And um, so I believe that it was my... My personal belief that he was nailed to a cedar wood um, tree and water came out of his belly. So these same items were used for death. And so leprosy is speaking death of people. And that's what Yahweh's trying to tell us here is this is you're speaking hate, which is if you hate your brother, You've committed murder in your heart. So there's a big correlation of gossip and slander and speaking evil that points to hate and murder.
You're murdering someone's reputation. And we're not allowed to do that. Okay? Because that person's going to hear it. He's going to hate you. And hate is contagious. Love is the opposite. So let's walk in love. Let's compliment each other. And the good thing is, if you've ever spoken bad about anyone, which everyone has, I'm, 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 I, I've made mistakes. So guess what? Yeshua was nailed to the cross and he, he took all this, you know, right? So he, he nailed this to the cross, but now we have to walk in repentance, which means we need to come up with a plan not to do it anymore. And the, the plan is we're going to compliment people. We're not, not we're going to cut people off if they're gossiping and we're not going to say anything negative. That's our plan. That's our repentance. And Yah will bless you with more Holy Spirit as you do that. And it'll be amazing. It'll be amazing. Okay. All right. Let's get to um, the good stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know. <laughs> that was actually pretty good. But um, um, okay. So did you know if you touch somebody who's unclean, you're unclean? Okay. <clears throat> so if you shake hands with somebody who's unclean, and they could be unclean for many reasons. They could have sat where a woman has sat on her monthly nita or a man has sat. Um, uh, so you know, there's many ways you could be unclean. If somebody spits on you and he's unclean, then you're unclean. Um, it's disgusting, but it's in the, it's in the Bible. <laughs> uh, okay, so how did people greet each other in Scripture? Well, they bowed to each other, okay? They bowed, and this is a way of honoring your brother as well. So um, this is the way, if you wanted, I'm not saying shaking hands is bad, okay? Uh, and I'm not saying high-fiving is bad at all either, okay? But what I'm saying is 